together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again on one accord. Something good's about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Perfecting Praise the Lord. Welcome to another edition of Perfecting Live, the online worship experience of Perfecting Love Community Church. Thank you for allowing us to come into your living room or wherever you may be viewing this broadcast on today. This is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that God has continued to keep you and your family safe as you all are continuing to exercise the safer at home practices that we are administering at this current time. We also pray that God is sustaining you through your health and through your finances as well as your spiritual growth. And more than anything, we really pray that you and your family are coming together closer during this particular season so that you can be stronger. Remember, before there was ever a church, there was family. And so God really wants us to make sure that we remain focused on building our families in the Word of God. And so I have to ask you a question. Have you and your family prayed together this week? Have you and your family shared the Word of God together this week? Have you and your family, of course, held hands and prayed for one another? And if not, then I want to encourage you to definitely make sure that you are continuing to remember your first ministry, which is your home. God is so good and He's great and greatly to be praised. He's continuing to bless me and my family. And though we miss you, we definitely want to let you know that we appreciate you week after week after week tuning in to Perfecting Live as well as our midweek Bible study classes that go on. And so, hey, we're getting ready for a great time in the Lord today. I pray that you've already turned your living room into a life room, a sacred space that you can come together and worship the Lord together as we go higher in spirit and in truth. And before we do that on today, we definitely want to just offer a quick word of prayer. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you for yet another week. You continue to keep us in perfect peace. God, we thank you for help. We thank you for as well as things are. We continue, O oh God, to lift up those who are on the front line. God, those essential workers, those who have to go to work day after day after day, exposing themselves to all kinds of sicknesses and diseases that may be out there, God. We continue to pray for those who are impacted by the coronavirus, and we lift up those who have even lost their lives, their family members, O oh God. We pray that you'll continue to cover them all and keep us as we continue to move forward in your presence. God, we love you. We thank you. And we pray that as we gather together virtually to worship your name, that you would meet us right where we are. Some of us are in need of a miracle. Some of us are in need of a breakthrough. Somebody's in need, oh God, of just your signs from heaven to reveal themselves unto them right now. We pray that today would be that day and that we're next in line for that miracle. God, we honor you. We bless you. And we declare and decree right now that today will be the best day of our lives. Help us right now, O oh God, to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I'm excited about worship on today. Let's go into the sanctuary where the praise team is ready to take us higher in the presence of the Lord. Let's have church.
an amazing selection by our music ministry. That's right, God has it all in his hands. Whatever you need, he has it all in his hands. If you need a breakthrough, it's in his hands. If you need a miracle, it's in his hands. If you need direction, it's in his hands. And guess what God will do? He will make sure that you have that blessing. All he has to do is pour it out unto you. And we believe that we're in a season that though we're going through, God is yet still in the blessing business, still in the miracle working business. So just know that God has you right there in the palm of his hands. So those of you who may be first time visitors with us on today, we want to say thank you for tuning in to Perfecting Live, the online worship experience of Perfecting Love Community Church. Our vision is quite simple. We are the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love with the love of the Lord. And if this is your first time viewing, let us know in the comment section. We want to give you a shout out if this is your first time tuning in with us. But otherwise, all of our members and our visitors and those who have visited with us uh, more than one time, we say first time a visitor, second time family. This is our time of worship where we will go around and celebrate uh, the presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ who come in to be with us. And so even now, we do that virtually. And just think about it for a moment. If you were in church and as you were walking in, you would see a familiar face and you would go to them and you would extend a wave to them or hug them, if not, or not dap them or high five them or whatever uh, your uh, moment of salutation is. And so even now, we want to do that virtually in the comments and just wave at one another, let them know we see them on worship. Come on, let's not go through another Sunday where we don't take time and say hello to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't walk past folk virtually. If you see them, give them a shout out. Tell them, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Where are my choir folk at? Where are my hugs ministry folks at? Where are the deacons at? Where are the ministers at? Come on, let's give some shout outs right here in this moment. Do it in the comment section. We want to fellowship virtually here and thank God that even though we can't be together physically, we can be together virtually. And until we do come back together, we're going to work this virtual thing and we're going to continue to connect with one another, whether it be through our Love From Home campaign or even doing our worship celebration. So that's right, continue to love on one another. And more than anything, we want to also keep in mind that this is our platform that God has blessed us with. Some of you have 10, 20, 30, 100 friends. Some of you have two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 friends and followers. Every time you share a video like this, what you do is let the world know you're not ashamed of the gospel. And so we ask, don't be afraid, be bold enough to stand on your platform and say, hey, I'm a member of Perfect and Love. Here's our worship service. Come on in right now. Click that share button and let folks know we're having church right now now to God be the glory for all the things he has done and I'll tell you why I'm excited some of y'all sitting there right now saying man Pastor Jay know he is excited today here's why I am excited this particular season is one of those seasons where we know we will be celebrating our graduates and we will be having parties and all kinds of uh, festivities in order to celebrate our graduates and yet COVID-19 thought that they were going to block perfecting love from shouting out our graduates so this particular week we actually you all to put in your submission so that we could celebrate our graduates and we have a few that we want to celebrate that submitted their information and we're going to highlight them uh, in just a few moments but right now this is our season where we really 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 want to celebrate our young folk because they didn't have their prom they are not having their graduations and yet here they are having to stay at home and they've been waiting for this moment for the last 12, 13 years, if you include kindergarten, if they've been in school wanting to celebrate this moment. And so, hey, we want to celebrate our high school students and not just them. We have one, a uh, couple of young people who hit a couple of milestones as well that submitted their information. And so we want to celebrate them during this particular moment in worship. And right after that particular point in, in, in this recognition for our young people, our graduates, our scholars, we're going to go back uh, into the sanctuary to hear uh, our sermonic selection and then I'll come right back with the word of God. That's right, we're going strong just like that. And if you want to give, you know what to do. All you have to do is text PLCC to the number 77977. And of course, we'll have more information on that at the end of service. But right now, it's about our scholars. So let's 
take a look at this video tribute to our scholars, our graduates, celebrate them, and I need you to do me a big favor. When you see their names and their tribute come across the screen, give them a congratulation message. Give them a shout out. Let them know that, hey, you may not have walked across the stage to get that diploma or that certificate, but we're going to celebrate you right here at Perfect and Love. And don't worry, we also have a special treat coming later on when this thing slows down, but I'll tell you more about that later. But for right now, I need everyone tuning in, member, visitor, or friend. Let's celebrate the young people that are graduating, and then right after that, we'll go into the sanctuary for another selection, and then, of course, we'll have the Word of God. I'll be back to you at the end of service. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss a few announcements we have at the end. God bless you.
translations exodus chapter 3 verse 7 uh we're gonna see how far we get hopefully we can get five and six in there uh if not then we'll go as far as we can go uh amen somebody amen amen, amen. exodus chapter number three verse number seven exodus chapter three verse number seven we're resting on our feet uh if you don't have your bibles you can look on the screen the word of the lord says then the lord told him i have certainly seen the oppression of my people in egypt I have heard the cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. I've heard the cries of their distress because of the haters, because of the enemy, because of those who have authority. Oh, I've heard their cries. I heard their cries because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of your suffering. We're going to pick right back up in part one of this series, which is I am going through. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am going through. Now, we're going to get out, but we've got to get through it. We're going to get out, but we have to get through it. We're going to get out. Throw your hands up. And say, I am going to come out, but I have to go through. Many times that going through part, again, messes us up. I've said over every start of this series or every Sunday that everybody is going through. Can we all get on one accord and go ahead and dispel this notion that we're the only ones going through something and know that we all got something we're dealing with? Amen, somebody. So since we all have something we're dealing with, wouldn't it be easy to just get on one accord and fight the devil together? Because <laughs> it ain't always about one of us. It's not about just how I feel. It's 
about how everybody is going through. And so with this particular sermon series, we're going to continue to walk through it. Uh, we gave several, several points, and I told you all last week, the going through portion, we have to look at it differently. We can't look at going through the way we looked at it before, which is to suggest that we are having some kind of pity party or that we're making excuses by the fact that we're in something or that we're stuck in, rather, because we have to understand there's a difference between being stuck in and going through. Most of us who declare that we are going through something, the reality is, is that the devil is trying to make us feel as if we're, you know, we're going through, but we're really stuck in it. So most folks, when they're going through something, they'll say they're going through, and then you can look at their service, how they're participating. But if you're really going through, you're still serving hard. Park right there, Holy Ghost. Park right there for a minute. Let me pull in, put it in park. When we find ourselves going through, the worst thing in the world to do is to not be present. The worst thing in the world to do is to not pray. The worst thing in the world to do is to find yourself complaining. That's not called going through. That's called being stuck. I'm broke. Nobody want to give me nothing, so I'm just going to sit here because I ain't got nothing to give. That's called stuck. And the Lord doesn't want you to be stuck. He wants you to keep moving. And he'll give you what, that's the amazing thing about God. God will give you everything you need as you go through. You're going through what you're going through. God will give you everything you need. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, but he tells you there is an exit on the other side, right? So we, don't, we want to declare that we're not stuck, but we're going through. It's progress. And that if we say that we're going through, that's a good statement. Don't let the devil strip you from complain, or, or, or strip you and have you uh, locked into this mode of complaining because you say you're going through. The next time you say you're going through, you all throw your hands up and say thank you. Somebody missed it. The next time you're going through, that's enough to tell God thank you. Okay, y'all still don't get it. When you're going through, that's progress. Somebody say progress. The last time I checked, if you go through a light, that means you went, you ran the light. You didn't stop in the middle of it, did you? I wish I had some help up in here. And so he, if you're going through, you should throw your hands up. My body is hurting. I'm going through. But thank you. My money don't look the way it needs to look, but uh, I'm going through. But thank you. Folk don't understand how I'm feeling, but, but, but thank you. So going through should be a, 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 pro, a, a statement of declaration of, of glory, of praise that God is bringing you out. Extra strategy number one was to pursue God. I'm not going to go back through it, get the DVD, get the tape. Uh, it, it's to pursue God. If you want to come out of what you're in, you have to go after God. It doesn't help you to say that you are going to get to God and come out of what you're going, uh, going through unless you pursue God first. Because God is going to show you where to go. Okay? So you have to pursue God. Everybody say pursue God. Strategy number two was to surrender to God. And when you go after God, you have to remember that God is going to be the one instructing you. So how you want to do it goes out the window. How we want to serve God goes out the window. We have to do it the way he says it. And so Moses, y'all remember, he told him, take off them shoes. Take them off. You are on holy ground. Right? And Moses was doing, he was going out to God. God told him, come closer. Then he said, stop. Right? You know, messing with them. Right? But he tells them, you've got to surrender. We've got to surrender to God. When you go out to God, God's going to give you what you need. But you've got to say, Lord, have your way. Surrender to him. Throw your hands up. Right? Surrendering. Lord, you have your way. Strategy number three was to respect God. Respect God. And if we want to come out of what we're going through, God is going to give you some instructions. But you have to be able to respect his process. God is going to give you some instructions, but you have to respect his process, okay? Which means, I told you all, even in our financial series, we said we can use this in anything of part or any part of life, is that God does not think the way you think. I'll make it inclusive. God does not think the way we think. I'm with you, right? Because God will tell us to do some stuff that is jacked up in the minds of the world. Lord, you want me to go pray for them and they hating on me? Lord, you want me to go serve them dinner, and they won't even call me and ask me how I'm doing? Lord, I open that door for them, and they won't even look back and say thank you. I wish I had some help in here. The Lord will have us doing some strange stuff. 
Anybody ever been up here and the Lord told you to do something? You all like, Lord, are you? That's when we really start going back and praying and asking Lord, the, the Dick Ricky, that, Lord, you sure you said that? Let me pray about four, five times. We got we to we have to uh, we have to respect God. We have to respect the process, respect what God is doing, because God will do things that will will help us get to the uh, to the next level. And He wants us to strip off our own understanding of things so that we can get to the next level. Last week we got into strategy four, but I didn't get all the way through it. And I want to go back to that, and that is uh, uh, beginning with verse six through verse number ten. And, and this strategy is all about listening to God, listening to God, and 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 the Lord He wants to get our attention. The Lord Lord wants to make sure that we're listening to what he's saying. And the tough thing about coming out of whatever we're in, we all look for God to speak to us, but most of the times the reason we end up getting stuck in or lack progress going through what we're going through is simply because we listen to the wrong folk. We pick up the phone, we call our neighbors, we call our buddies, we call our home girl, we call our partner, we call these other folk, and God's like, when are you going to call me? The old folk told you my line is never busy. The Lord is so good when you call him, he won't hit decline. I ain't going to mess with y'all today. Y'all just help me preach now. Verse 6 through 10 says that we need to listen to God. Everybody say, listen, listen. to God. God. Stay with me here. Look at where we go. He says, I am, the, I am the God of your father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Verse number 6. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now he is walking with, he's having an, an encounter, an experience with God. The God that he heard about of his ancestors. And I told you all, those of you parents in here, you need to make sure you're often talking about God. So that your young people, when they have an encounter with God, they will know that they're in the presence of God. Many of our young folk don't know what to do when they come to church because they ain't never seen you. Oh, Lord, help me, son. What to do in this kind of atmosphere? Well, I looked at my parents. They, they, could, they could, come on, all right. Make sure we're, come on, all right. So we, he, he says when he noticed that, that God was there and, and, and that God had told him who he was, then Moses then understood, I am really in the presence of the Lord. Look what he says in verse number 7. He said, the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries and distress. The cry that he heard was not a cry of pity. The cry that he heard was a cry of distress. In other words, they want to be connected to God, but there are some things that are going wrong that have them in a hurtful position. In a, in a position of bondage, in a position of pain. And so he heard their cries. They have been going through for a long time, and they cried out to the Lord. The Lord tells Moses, I heard their cries. I know what's going on. I know they got haters, but at the end of the day, I'm aware of it. I've seen it, and I've heard it. And so God, he gave us that last week, and he tells us in verse number 8. Look at what happens in verse number 8. He says, so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of the Egyptians into their own fertile and spacious. I got to say this real soft this week because y'all won't let me get through it like y'all did last week. So I said, okay, I'm going to say it real soft right here. Just make sure y'all get it. Say amen so we can move on, right? He said, I have come down. God took time out of his schedule to come all the way down to see about you. He says, I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. Yeah, the enemy has power, but their power doesn't supersede God's. I've come all the way down out of my busy schedule to take care of my children, to bring them out of what they're going through, the heartaches, the pain, the situations, the health issues, the hatred, the, all that kind of stuff, and all the folks that seem to appear that they have power over them. I'm coming down to go and rescue them, and I'm going to give them, check this out, their own, fertile, fertile, shout glory, shout glory, fertile. That means there's going to be reproduction. That means that God is going to honor the seeds that you sow. Some of y'all missed that last week. The Lord put it back in my spirit to make sure... Fertile, so everybody say fertile. fertile. First lady, high five again. Bam. <laughs> fertile soil, all right? So that reproduction can happen. The Lord tells us in the body of Christ that we should be fruitful and any Bible readers in here today? Right? So he says, I'm going to bring it to your own. I wish I had. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I might get taped last week. We talked about it, right? Fertile. And then spacious land. Spacious land. Giving you room to occupy. Giving you room to move around. Giving you freedom so that you're not cluttered. And some of y'all in here right now are so cluttered in your life. You're screaming, Lord, I want out because I can't even see. I'm claustrophobic in my life right now. Jammed in. And the Lord says, don't worry. I'm going to bring you out. Come on, encourage your neighbor. Say, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're coming out. 
He says, and he says, I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, milk and honey, milk and honey. The land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. Then he says, look. I like that he says, look. Because now he wants to show you. Look, look, look for evidence. He says, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me. Look. The cries, they got to me. They broke heaven. Somebody got a prayer through. It prays to be connected to somebody who can get a... So the prayer, I, I got it, I got it, I, I, they, they, I got it. The, the, the prayers, the cry of the people, they reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians have been abusing them. Then look what he says in verse number 10. Here's, this is what we didn't get last week. He says, now go. He tells them again to go. What does he say? Go, go. For I am sending you to Pharaoh. That's just like God. That the Lord will tell you in pursuit of coming out to get up from whatever you're dealing with and go. Which means he don't want you stuck. The devil will try to get us locked in all the time with anything. And he says, get up here now. Go. Come on, tell your neighbor, go, 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 go. Look at where he tells him to go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh. In other words, the Lord is trying to tell you there is enough power in you that the Lord has given you to defeat the enemy in your life. And some of us give the enemy way too much credit. Some of us will look at the enemy and make the enemy feel like he's bigger and better than who he really is. But don't you know the power that the devil has is nothing compared to the power that you have. So he says, I'm sending you to go face your giant. I'm sending you to go face the one that's been putting you in all this bondage. So y'all got to get in y'all prayer closet and not be afraid to go and pray against the enemy. Y'all got to get down on your knee. Where was he yet? He was in the presence of the Lord. Go and deal. Go face your enemy. Some of us stuck because we won't face our problem. We're going through financial problems because we won't face the fact that we got a gambling problem. Some of us stuck uh, in our lives right now with issues of trust because we got fake problems. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. Stuck because we won't deal with our issue. And issues are real. Help me, somebody. He says, get up. Get up and go face your giant. He says, you must lead the people out of Egypt. This is for those of us who are leaders in the body of Christ. We've got to understand that God has given us an assignment to lead, and we ain't got time for not facing issues. No, I'm going to deal with issues when they come. Help me, somebody. Anyway, say, here is why it's so important to listen to God. Um, we've got to understand that when you're going through God, uh, or going through for God, rather, God will not let the enemy continue to have their way with you. All these years, they've been stuck in bondage. But the Lord says, enough is enough. He told me to tell y'all today, enough is enough. When you're going through, and you're going through over and over and over again, but you're going through for the sake of God, God wants me to let you know that enough is enough, and the devil cannot have control over your life. We are going to come out. We just got to go. Okay, y'all with me. It's required that we listen. And when God says enough is enough, that's your sign of confirmation. When God says enough is enough, that's your sign of confirmation that he will bring you out. So here's strategy number five. Strategy number five. Extra strategy number five. We only got two. Extra strategy number five and six. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on, encourage somebody close to you. Tell them, don't be afraid. Verse number 11, he says, but Moses, check this out, check this out, check this out, people of God. But Moses protested God. Moses protested God. You know what you're doing, Lord? Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Worried about who he is and forgot who God was. I could ride home on that one right there. Because some of y'all are so stuck looking at the problem and not looking at the problem solver. And the only reason we get, don't get through what we're going through is because we give our problems too much credit. 
Don't you know that even though the storm can rage in your life, that the Lord has the power to stop the storm? Amen, somebody. But who am I to go before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? You know, I had this same conversation with the Lord back in 2007 when he called me to pastor. Who am I to go and preach to anybody? Who am I to lead folk? And then the Lord sit up here now and you fast forward like, oh, God, Lord, look at what you're doing. Who am I? Who am I? I know what he was dealing with here, but he was dealing with the fact that he knew that there was an enemy who had power over the land. And so he was concerned about it, and he was concerned about the people he had to go face. So he says, who am I leading these people? In this text, Moses shows signs of fear to address Pharaoh and uh, the people of Israel. This is typical behavior. When God is trying to bring us out, our flesh will fight the calling of going through in order to remain, uh, or in order to, uh, and it keeps us being stuck in. And so it, it becomes being a thing of being full of excuses. When the Lord is trying to challenge us to go somewhere, we make all kinds of excuses. But Lord, I'm nobody. I can't do it. Well, the Lord says, you are somebody. I can use you. I can use you. And I can not only use you, but use you to lead my people. And some of us just don't believe what God has placed in us. You've got to be sure of the fact that when God calls you to greatness, that you can be great. But just make sure that when greatness elevates you, you can throw your hands up and say, to God be the glory. Check out God's response. God answered and said to him, I will be with you. I'm going through. You're telling me to face my giants. You're telling me to face my issues. You're telling me to go down and lead the people. Who am I to do all of that, Lord? He doesn't he didn't entertain what he was saying on other. He said, I will be with you. Tell your neighbor, the Lord is with you. He says, and not only is he with them, look at what he says. And this is your sign. Isn't God, I want to say ain't. Can I say ain't? Ain't God good. That he would not only tell me he's with me, but will give me evidence he's with me. Okay, for those of y'all who need to see evidence from time to time because what you've been going through been so hard on your life, so hard on your health, so hard on your mind that sometimes you need to just see evidence, this is for you. And guess what? I'm right there with you. That sometimes you just need the Lord to show me some sign that everything's going to be all right. Because I don't want to go through no more hell if I know I ain't coming out on the heavenly side. Here's your sign. That I am the one that sent you. When you have been brought, the, when, when you have been brought the people, uh, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. So after you go through, I'm gonna bring you right back to look where I brought. Don't get so mad about what you're going through because the Lord will circle the wagon around that thing and bring you back so your enemies can say, hey. Is that who I was talking about? Look at what they drive now. Look at what they were. Look at how they move. Is there anybody up in here that's ever had a circle moment where the Lord will bring you back where he brought you? Somebody ought to shout, hey, right there. Because when the Lord brings you back, all you can do is just throw your hands up and he said, I bless you in the presence of God. Sit on down, sit on down, sit on down, sit on down, sit on down. So not only did he give him a sign, but here go most of us. God give you a sign. He tells you what he's going to do. And we still full of most stuff that we got to say. Should have got the first time, but what happened? But Moses protested. If I go to, now at first it was Pharaoh that was a problem, right? Now he said, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me. They will ask me, well, what's his name? You mean tell me you've been in church that long? And you, then what should, some of y'all, 
then what should I tell them? God replies. And this is the part I really like. I am who I am. I think God got a little offended by that question. I mean, when I read this and I do my context clues back from Chargene Elementary School, my comprehension tells me that God must have been a little moved by that statement. You tell them I am. That I am sent you. Uh, say this to the people of Israel. That I am sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, just in case they don't know who I am is. Just in case they don't know who I am is. You know, I am was here in the very beginning when there was nothing and there was darkness and he just started speaking and stuff started happening. Y'all do know who the I am is. That when there's nothing going on in your life, he can speak to it and all of a sudden start creating. So if they don't get it because the parents weren't telling the young folk, tell them the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name. My name to remember for all generations, which means I need you to make sure that they know who I am, who I was, and who I'll be. Okay, y'all ready on this side? They missed it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? That they will know who I am, who I was, and who I'll be. There's no changing who God is. I told you if you've seen him do it before, see, I'm only telling y'all about the going through part because the coming out part, y'all already know what the come out part is going to be. We're going to shout when we get there. Don't worry about it. But the going through part, it messes us up. So along the way, they in bondage. They've been in it for a long time. They're ready to come out. And he's sitting here wondering, well, what am I going to tell them? Just tell them who I am. And when you tell them, make sure that they know that I'm going to continue to be who I've always been. Because when they think about what I did for their ancestors, then they'll know that I'm going to do the same thing for them. See, if I was a good Baptist preacher, I'd go home right there. The God of Abraham. Oh, the God. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a preacher. Look at verse 16. He says, now, now, go. Tell them again. There it is. Now, go. Tell them again. And call together all the elders of Israel. Tell them Yahweh, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to me. He told me I have been watching closely. Tell God, thank you right there. I've been, actually, I've been watching. I've been watching closely. For those of y'all think God ain't paying you no attention, I've been watching closely. I see how the Egyptians have been treating you. I see how your haters have been treating you. I see how your manager has been treating you. I see how the neighborhood association has been treating you. I see how the, all these haters have been treating you. He says, verse number 11 through 16 is about not being afraid. Because you're going to have to face these giants in your life. But regardless, you have the Lord with you. Regardless of what you have to face. Regardless of all the problems you have to deal with. God says, I am with you and I am sending you. You know, it reminds me. Uh, Michael, you probably can help me out with this one. Uh, when I was growing up. Uh, my family, uh, Jamal, uh, when we was growing up, that we went to a uh, uh, Pine Hill Community Center summer camp. We were deep at Pine Hill Community Center summer camp. We were so deep, we were so deep that when we got there, uh, uh, people quickly learned that we were in the house. And the Brown family, we had folk that were just good friends about one of my cousins. He lived, well, he's not even my real cousin, but we call him cousin because we grew up together and all that. He lives in Nashville now. We still joke about this thing to this day that when we showed up, we had folk different last names, but we merged under the Brown name. Because that's who my grandma, Essie Brown. Y'all know my dear. Right? Right. If you haven't, to know, to know is to love. Amen. So we adopted the Brown name. That's who it was. And some people who came to the camp didn't really know who we were. And this was in South Memphis, so from time to time, you know, kids fight. I know the Orange Mound folk up here know about fighting. <laughs> Bean Hampton. Lamorne on guard. Right? So when they showed up, 
you know, sometimes there will be some difficulties in the camp. One time I was by myself. And it was somebody new who wanted to buck at me, Brother Rand. I told him, do you not know I'm in the Brown family? Now, he left me alone. So some of y'all missed it. I had a name that I was carrying when my enemies came again. All I'm trying to tell some of y'all is that when you have to go and face your enemy, all you need is a And there is a name that is above all names. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Bodies are healed calling on Jesus. I wish I had some help up in here. Is there anybody up in here that's ever had to call on the name of You ought to get some practice right now and shout Jesus. Sit on down. We're going to get here. We're going to get there. All I did was change names. Hallelujah. Some of y'all need to change names because you're still carrying the wrong name. You're carrying the wrong name. Extra strategy number six. Extra strategy number six. It's to claim your blessing. Claim your blessing. Declare. Receive your blessing. Receive your blessing. This last extra strategy is about owning your deliverance. God has declared it over your life, but will you receive it? Some of us won't receive it because we're so stuck in being enslaved. Our, mind, our bodies want to be free, but our minds stuck in slavery. Keep coming. When we get to part two, the Lord is going to really show y'all something. Uh, look, look at verse 17 through 22. This is all about claiming your strategy. Look, uh, and this is going to help us when we're trying to come out of bondage so that we can claim the blessing of deliverance. Everybody shout deliverance. Verse 17, he says, I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to the land, he's repeating himself, flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Prejudicites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. You're going to take over their stuff. Verse 18 says, the elders of Israel will accept your message. Can I pause there for two seconds? The elders of Israel will accept your message. Who are the elders? These are the people who have a, not by title, let me clarify this, but people who have a relationship with God. Okay, so y'all know who I'm talking to now. So the folk with the relationship with God, you know I'm talking to you, right? You know the Lord, is, he's about to show something with you now. He says the elders of Israel will accept your message. He just had a problem with the folk. He just told, Lord, what am I going to tell them? And he tell them, well, tell them I am, that I am sent you. And when you go and tell them, not, notice not everybody got it. Man, I love you so much. Well, y'all get this thing today. So if you have a relate, if you are going after God, if you are pursuing God and surrendering to God, he says that you will receive this message. He says, come on, then you and the elders must go to the king, which means I ain't taking nobody to fight with me that I don't have a relationship with God. The Lord, the God of Hebrew, has met with us. So please, Let's take a three-day journey into the wilderness. Go in places you don't want to go. Go in places you don't feel like going. Doing stuff you might not want to do. Doing stuff that's different than how you feel. I wish I had help in here. And offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. What is the sacrifice? What is this sacrifice? This sacrifice is all about practice leading them back to the mountain where God started this thing. And he just said a moment ago that when you come back here, what are you going to do? You're going to worship the Lord in this very place. And the Lord is trying to tell us that if we want to come out, we need to learn how to pray. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. But the praise you give is a sacrifice. 
Now, today it shouldn't be hard to praise the Lord because we got an extra hour of sleep, if I'm not mistaken, right? Surely we didn't use our hour up on some stuff we ain't had no business doing. Oh, Lord. The sacrifice, verse 19, but I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty, uh, unless a mighty hand forces him. In other words, it's going to take something mighty to help you get through what you're going through. Don't you know your own power? You're not going to make it. But the Lord says, I'm with you. And not only am I with you, I'm going to go with you and let everybody know that a mighty force is working in you and through you. So in verse number 20, he says, I will raise my hand. He didn't say nothing about him raising his hand to fight. His hand needs to go up in praise and in surrenderance. The Lord says, I'm going to go with you, and I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians. I'm going to smack them silly. Performing all kinds of miracles among them. In other words, your enemy about to see God do great stuff in your life that they ain't they gonna know where it came from because they know and been around you long enough to know you couldn't have did that by yourself. Anybody up in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Performing all kinds of miracles among them. When we get in part two, we'll start talking about some of those miracles and signs and things he worked out. Then at last, he will let you go. In other words, God said, it's going to happen, but you still got to go through just a little while longer. You, you're close, you're close. Come on, tell your neighbor. You're close, you're close, but you still got to go through just a little, little while longer. Come on, I know sometimes we get discouraged because we're going through. I know sometimes we want to give up because we're going through. I know sometimes we want to walk away because we're going through. But the Lord says, it's going to be all right because he will let you go. In other words, like they just sang earlier, the chains are going to be broken, but you've got to declare that it's going to be broken. If you don't receive in your life that the Lord is trying to bring you out you will never come out so and I love this part I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you the people who've been your slave drivers your haters your manager that didn't give you your promotion them folk in the neighborhood who know they should have voted your yard the best yard we have all kind of enemies in our life. They shouldn't even really be no enemy, but whatever. He says to him that they going to look favorably among you. I know you don't have a degree, but I want to hire you. Come on, somebody. So the Lord says that everybody who is hating on you, they're going to look at you like you're a champ. But it's not you they looking at. It's the Lord operating in you. I wish I had some folk that got the Lord operating in them. Because the Lord wants to use you in order to bring others closer to him. He says, look at this, look at this. They will, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, give you gifts. When you go, so you will not leave. Some folk been so locked up because they steady leaving and ain't getting nothing. You been in their relationship so long and ain't got nothing, ho. Oh. But the Lord says, you won't leave empty-handed. Sometimes going through means you got to separate. But when you separate, I'm not going to leave you empty-handed. In other words, the Lord says, I got blessings for your life. But is there anybody up in here that will reach up and claim what the Lord has for you? Is there anybody up in here that will shout glory in advance for what you're going through? Because the Lord said, I got a blessing with your name on it, huh? Come on, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Every Israelite woman huh, will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from, air, from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and daughters huh, with all of these wonderful things, stripping. Stripping. The Egyptians, of all they power, what they thought they had, they ain't got nothing until they see God work in me and everything God has for me. It's not only what the enemy has, but eyes have not seen, neither ear heard, never has it entered into the heart of man what God 
have prepared for you. Uh, is there anybody up in here uh, that knows God got a blessing uh, with your name on it? Uh, I know you can't see it right now, but you got to believe it uh, and you got to receive it. Uh, come on, tell heaven. Uh, say, Lord, uh, I receive. Uh, say, Lord, uh, I believe. Uh, now give God praise. Wow, what an amazing word from the Lord. I tell you, this series, I Want Out, is really blessing me all over again. Uh, some of these things I didn't even remember were stated, but God continues to just bless over and over and over again. I know he's blessing you. If you receive that word today and you say, man, that word is for me, and you want to pray the prayer of salvation, we want to pray that prayer with you right now. All you have to do is just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, dear God, I'm sorry for all of the wrong I've ever done come into my life and forgive me. I confess I am a sinner. I also confess that Jesus died for my sins. Because of my confession, because of what I believe in my heart, that Jesus rose from the grave, I am saved. Thank God for my new brothers and sisters in Christ who may have prayed their prayer. We are excited to have you be a part of the body of Christ at large. And if you are in need of a church home, we will gladly take you in, even right now. Send us an inbox if you prefer to do it that way, or even comment below, and we will definitely reach out to you and connect you with our ministry. Again, we're so excited about what God is doing here in this season for our church and for all of the members. I want you all to continue to check in with one another. I'm so inspired by not only the phone calls and text messages that me and my wife have received after being in the hospital for more than 90 days. So many of you have reached out to us and you're doing it for one another. Some of you all are aware of some of the different issues that other people may be facing in the church. And when I get those phone calls where people are saying folks have reached out to them and, and said something to them, even when I didn't know about it, but yet the members are connecting together and staying connected and checking in with one another, that is blessing my heart. Some of them say, Pastor, well, we knew you you were going through we don't want to tell you what was going on so I connected with another leader or I connected with another lay member of the church that warms my heart to know that you are all staying connected and loving on one another despite the times let's keep that thing going and keep supporting one another as we continue to move forward and listen next week we'll be back here at the same time and on the same channel and we ask that you all continue to subscribe and follow the church now stay tuned for just a few more announcements that we'll have and we'll go ahead and dismiss today's sir and pray that God will continue to keep you as you move forward in this upcoming week. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you for an another amazing, amazing worship experience. God, we pray that you will help us to not only use this word, but apply it to our everyday living. God, we pray for every person who clicked on this particular worship service and pray that they got something out of it. We continue to lift up our graduates and pray that you will bless them with resources to help them grow and learn and study as they go abroad. Oh God, we pray that you will continue to bless their parents and bless every one of us as we continue to chase after you. Lord, we need you now like never before. And the good news is we feel your presence even during this season. So God, continue to have your way in our lives. We love you, we bless you, and we thank you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Stay tuned for our announcements, and we will see you all next Sunday at this same time. God bless you as my Thank you for tuning in to Perfecting Live, the online worship service of Perfecting Love Community Church. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Our virtual study groups are really growing. Our groups meet for Perfecting Wow on Wednesdays and Sunday school each Sunday at 9 a.m., including our new members class with Pastor Jay. We have separate classes and material for people of all ages. Let's grow together. If this ministry is a blessing to you, we pray you will consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. Your gifts of any amount is a tremendous blessing to our outreach. For the latest information, please visit our website, perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org, like our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Perfecting Love CC. These have been your morning announcements. 
We are Perfecting Love Community Church, the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you and have a wonderful day.